I've got a big commitment here to take over, to, certainly as the steward of this great organization and what's been done here in the past for so many decades. And, you know, it's my commitment to the, the Holman family, uh, to the fact that you'd select us as an opportunity to take on this uh, investment. Uh, it, it's amazing. Hello and welcome to Inside Indiana Business. I'm Gary Dick. It was an announcement that shook Indianapolis, the state of Indiana, and the motorsports world. Holman and Company Chairman of the Board Tony George announcing the sale of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway to Pinsky Entertainment Corporation and legendary team owner and business executive Roger Pinsky. Now, when the deal closes, it will mark the end of more than seven decades of ownership by the uh, Holman George families. Uh, trans, uh, they transformed really what was a dilapidated, weed infested property in 1945 into the world's greatest race course giving Indianapolis and Indiana a global identity and an emotional attachment that has spanned generations in this state and far beyond. Roger Pinsky, a legend at the famed Oval, the winningest car owner in Indy 500 history with 18 victories. So how did the deal come together and what could it mean for the future of IMS? For some answers, I'm pleased to be joined by Holman and Company CEO Mark Miles. And Mark, welcome back to the program. Thanks, Gary. Big week, uh, to put it to, <laughs> to put it mildly. And this came, this deal came together pretty quickly, about six weeks, and it's kind of started with a, a dinner at the Columbia Club in downtown Indy. In the end, that's right. This yeah. last chapter, the, mm -hmm. the definitive chapter, started six weeks ago. But you know, the board and the family had been thinking about strategic opportunities for growth really for many years. Eventually, um, the, the focus was on the possibility of a sale, mm -hmm. and there were a number of interested parties, um, terrific companies that could transact. But about six weeks ago, we uh, Tony called Roger and we sat down and he signed an NDA that night. Mm -hmm. On a Thursday night, on Saturday, we were in Michigan with our CFO Cindy Lucchese and his team and him, and they'd already digested unbelievable quantities of data about the company. Yeah. He obviously knew that all the history and yeah. all that it stands for, but um, from that moment, that Saturday, uh, till the announcement, it was 24-7, yeah. and I mean it. I mean, yeah. there wasn't a lot of sleep involved, not very many people to keep it uh, under wraps. How did you keep it under wraps? I mean, it's amazing in this 24-7 uh, uh, media era. How did you keep it under wraps? I'll answer your question, but the fun, fun thing for me, the, the morning after the announcement, with Roger, we went to Charlie Brown's Diner on Main Street of yeah, Speedway. Yeah, legendary place, yeah. Unbelievable place. And uh, Liz, the owner, came up and she said, you know, I didn't know. I was completely surprised. I had no idea. And if I didn't know, nobody <laughs> knew. <laughs> so yeah, it, it, that happened. Um, there weren't very many people involved. Yeah. So the deal making, the due diligence, and the negotiating of the agreements, the development of the agreements, were mostly done in-house. Mm -hmm. In our case, we were represented locally by Ice Miller mm -hmm. and Mike Milken there did a phenomenal job. So we just didn't let many people know and we didn't, yeah. I mean, there were about uh, four people at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway that yeah. knew about this until we got ready to announce it. Speaking of small numbers, there's gotta be a small number of individuals or groups who would who would qualify to, for this kind of a deal. And I've talked to a number of people, I tend to concur that Roger Penske would seem to be that kind of that perfect fit from a business standpoint, a motorsports standpoint, uh, what he's accomplished, vision, all those, those types of indicators. At, at one level, there are sovereign funds around the world that would, mm -hmm. You know, yeah. that, that I know were interested, mm -hmm. and then there were there were other, uh, you know, very major entities that that, mm -hmm. would, that were engaged. But Roger's the perfect conclusion because he's got, you know, he's poured more of his life mm -hmm. into the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and IndyCar than anybody except the George family. Mm -hmm. he, he knows all the history; he's part of all of it for for at least five decades, and that's the racing side. Mm -hmm. Nothing to learn there. On the business side. It's unbelievable the businesses that he's built and the organizations that he's built, and so he is uniquely, perfectly suited for this. Given that and the time you've spent with him, not only pre the deal but after the announcement, you spent a considerable time. What's your take? People are wondering what is this going to mean for the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, for racing, for for community development around the speedway, all those types of things. What's your gut feel right now, based on your conversations with Roger Penske? Well, it's all good. It can. It can. We are no longer. 
terribly resource constrained. Mm -hmm. So I, I know a lot of people just assume if somebody writes a check like this, mm -hmm. that they must know exactly what they want to do with it. That's really never the case. We've taken six weeks to figure out what it is and how to make an arrangement, which gives Roger and the organization, us working with them, the opportunity to say specifically what we'll do. Mm -hmm. But everything is gonna be looked at. And as, as you referred, um, we spent four and a half hours uh, Tuesday with him up and down the stairs and the closets and the restrooms looking at every part of so the you took him, you told me you took him to places he'd never been at the Indianapolis Morning. Yeah, well, you know, he's a competitor. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. And to all of a sudden see what it looks like over on Georgetown Road, which he'd yeah. never go to, right? Yeah. And all these other aspects. I, it, it, it was exciting to watch his reactions. Mark Miles, the CEO at Holman & Company. Uh, fascinating uh, inside information on this deal. Appreciate you being here. As always, look forward to talking to you soon. Thanks, Gary. All right.